in the dirt again. In this video, we're going to reveal the mystery of why we don't put down a tarp to keep the ballistic gel clean. Are we unaware of this new invention, the tarp, or are we just too cheap to go out and buy one? In every video where we shoot the ballistic gel and it lands in the dirt, we'll get hundreds if not thousands of comments suggesting we use a tarp. Now to many viewers it seems that we're doing something wrong and I've even coined the term Easter egg of wrongness. The average viewer will see something wrong and they cannot resist the urge to try to correct us. It's just human nature and it gets people to comment that would normally never comment if everything was perfect. Now this is great for viewer engagement but it's not really the reason why we don't use a tarp. Now I think you'll agree that this is a very dirty block of gel. I just recast it and am I crazy putting dirt all over it and grind it in like that? Now imagine we're setting up to, to film a new video. We pull the tarp out, lay it on the ground, then we put the table on top of it, maybe stake down the tarp so it doesn't blow away from the wind. Now that may take, what, five minutes maybe? Then afterwards, we'd have to fold the tarp back up. It's gonna be all dirty on the bottom side, right? So then I'd have to take it home, uh, lay down the lawn, wash it off, let it dry, fold it back up, and that might take 45 minutes. Or we can just do this. The dirt simply washes off that easy. And now, my tip on how to remove ballistic gel out of a mold. Now, if you've never cast ballistic gel before, this may seem very simple to do, but if you have, you know the agony of trying to get this sticky uh, gel out of this mold. It wants to grip onto the side walls of the mold. And the trick here is just to peel the gel away from the wall and squirt some liquid soap in there. The soap allows you to get your hand slid all the way to the bottom of the mold without damaging the gel itself. It can be a little bit fragile and you can damage it with your fingertips. Now on a side note, you may notice that there is a slight yellow tinge to our gel. This is uh, the second or third time I've recast this one block of gel and it doesn't become dirty from obviously from landing the dirt. It becomes yellow from just reheating it. It's like cooking oil. It degrades every time you reheat it. Now I think on Claire Blissick's website they say you can recast this stuff 15 times but uh, I don't see how that's even possible. Now back to the, our operation here. I'm getting the block lubricated all the way down to the bottom. And finally, once I get it all lubed up, you can reach down there, grab the bottom, and it just slides out that easy. Now I've watched a lot of other videos of how to remove gel. I've never seen anyone use something as simple as soap. This is the way to do it, folks. Now the block of gel costs $140, $150 if you include shipping and all that. It's not cheap and we want to get as many cycles out of it, uh, recastings, as possible. This clear ballistic gel only looks good when it's brand new. After that, it just gets a little worse and worse every time you recast it. When you remove the block from the mold, it has kind of a matte finish so you can just dress it up. They say you're using a hairdryer, but that's pretty weak. Uh, I also use a heat gun or a torch and you can kind of gloss up the surface real quick. Now preferably you want to do this right before you're ready to shoot it and film it because every fingerprint, everything this gel block touches will leave like a smudge on it. And like I said, the gel block only looks great when it's brand new. No matter how careful you are cleaning the gel block before you remelt it, powder residue, metallic residue from the projectiles will all dirty the gel a little bit but the dirt does not come from falling on the ground. Now I'm looking at alternatives to clear ballistic gel. A viewer recently suggested trying something called Plastisol. This is the stuff that people make artificial fishing lures out of. And this is what I thought clear ballistic gel was actually made out of. I then cooked a sample using a coffee mug in my oven in my house and I realized that was a big mistake. In the past I have used the kitchen oven to recast the clear ballistic gel without too many issues. But the Plastisol is a PVC based material and it stinks, it smokes and creates some pretty toxic fumes when you're cooking it in the kitchen in the oven. The wife was not happy. But she did buy me this sweet electric roaster pan so I could do everything outdoors. Now much to my surprise the mold that Danny welded up for me fits perfectly inside this roaster pan thing. The Plastisol has a look and consistency of milk. I set the roaster to about 
350 degrees and this is about an hour in. You can see how it's starting to clarify on the edges. The copper wires are there to help conduct heat down into this plastisol. It doesn't conduct heat very well on its own so I gave it a little bit of help there. Now it's unlikely that anyone has ever tried to cast nearly two gallons of plastisol in one big block like this before. After a couple more hours you can see we have a surface temperature of 280 degrees. From what I understand you need to get to about 350 degrees before it fully cures. Overall it took four or five hours to fully cook the gel block and I removed the gel block in the same manner using the soap as I did with the clear ballistic gel. And just like with our clear ballistics block we hit it with a torch, glazed up the surface to give it a nice shine. Now let's address the most obvious thing here is the block is yellow. I was hoping it would be clear, but it is fairly transparent. The clarity is a little better than if you made a block out of natural gelatin. Now you can see that I have a little bit of cloudiness going on there. That's probably because I didn't stir it well enough while it was cooking. But overall I'm actually pretty pleased at the results, especially being my first time casting something like this. Now one thing I did learn was the plastisol block is very resistant to heat. I left this block on this table all day long in nearly 100 degree heat and it never drooped, sagged, or changed shape. If you were to leave a clear ballistics block out in the sun for even an hour in that temperature, it would turn into a puddle. Our block of clear ballistic gel weighs in at around 16 pounds but our plastisol block weighs in at almost 19 pounds. Now let's see how these two blocks compare when we shoot them with an air rifle pellet. Now much to my surprise, the penetration on each of the blocks was pretty much exactly the same. And we're talking about two inches. Now even though our plastisol block is yellow, the clarity is still pretty good. Now let's look at the positives and the negatives. The five gallon bucket of plastisol costs $140 including shipping. And that's enough to make two blocks with a little bit left over. I bought the clear ballistic block at a local shop and walked out the door paying $140 for that. The clear ballistics gel is definitely not plastisol. It's almost odorless and you can get away melting it in your kitchen oven. But cooking the plastisol indoors, you're gonna regret it after the first five minutes. It definitely has a PVC smell to it. It smells like when you chop a PVC pipe in a chop saw. Now, the block being yellow, is that really a negative thing? To some, maybe. Just bear in mind, this was my first attempt at cooking plastisol and I could have done something wrong. I could have overheated it, I could have maybe uh, shield it to prevent any oxidation. I don't know. I've been emailing back and forth with the folks at Bait Plastics who have been pretty helpful to me actually. But uh, you know at first I proposed the idea of using their product as ballistic gel and honestly I don't think they even knew what ballistic gel was. And that's only fair because I had no idea people had a hobby of making these uh, flexible fish bait things at home. But I think they were excited about the prospect of using their product for a completely different genre of sportsmen, shooters, not just fishermen. Now the folks at Bait Plastics are chemists and they even proposed coming up with a special formula just for ballistic gel blocks. But as you saw, we're really close to perfecting it. As far as the yellowing goes, they propose trying a heat stabilizer, which they also sell. That's the next step. The ultimate goal is to make this process so simple that anyone can do it. And if I can do it, I think anyone else can. It wasn't that hard to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.